officials. Uh, welcome to the Western Diocese. And welcome to this Armenian and Japanese Communities Friendship Event, Legacy of Diana Avkar, organized by the Western Diocese of the Armenian Church of North America and the Consulate General of Japan in Los Angeles, as well as co-sponsored by the Little Tokyo Service Center, Japanese American National Museum, and Japanese American Cultural and Community Center. My name is Edwin Minasian, and I'm honored to serve as the Master of Ceremonies this evening. Well, contrary to what an average person may think, or conventional wisdom, Japanese and Armenian people have indeed had historic links, especially in crucial and critical times, and we're gathered today, thankfully, to witness the furthering and forging of our cultural and national links and relations. From the legendary Diana Avkar, the main feature of this program, to the dusty but fertile fields of Fresno in the early 20th century, poor migrants battling together against all sorts of problems, including xenophobia, discrimination, and the aftermath of World War II following the disgraceful internment and as the Armenians kept their neighbor's land, and when they come back, the Japanese came back, they returned it to them in good shape. Too much worse, to the bloody horror of Greeks and Armenians being saved from drowning in that inferno in Smyrna in 1922 by the Japanese Navy. The Viscount Eichi Shibusawa, Near East Relief, the eternal link of Spitak with Eastern Japan, the ever strengthening ties between the young Republic of Armenia and Japan, a true world leader. We share much together. Now we are here, the capital of the Pacific Rim, gathered in the city of Los Angeles, and this is an educated guess, and I'm sure somebody much knowledgeable than me can correct me, but I'm pretty certain this is where people of Armenian and Japanese descent live together more than anywhere else in the world. We hope this spirit and demonstration of genuine camaraderie and cooperation between the two ancient peoples, the civilizations, the Armenian people and the Japanese people, Japan and the Republic of Armenia, will invigorate all. I would like to recognize Senator Rui Matsukova of the House of Councillors, National Director of Japan. Timothy R. Saito, <laughs> Judge Superior Court of the State of California. Our very own Los Angeles City Council member, Paul Kirkorian. <laughs> Deputy Mayor of International Affairs, City of Los Angeles, Ambassador Nina Hachigian. <laughs> member Los Angeles Unified School District Board of Education, Scott Schmerelson. <laughs> Vice President of the Burbank Unified School District Board of Education, Dr. Arnold Abakanya. <laughs> we also would like to acknowledge the presence of the Armenian National Committee of America, Western Region, Chair Lady Nora Hovsepian, and her government. We are also joined by Representative of United States Congressman Adam Schiff, California State Senator Antonio Cortantino, California State Assemblymember Laura Cleveland, LA County Supervisor Catherine Barger, and LA City Council Member Mitchell Bryan. Once again, thank you for joining us for this evening, and I will call on our first speaker and for his remarks, His Eminence Archbishop of Nandarderian, Primate of the Western Diocese of the Armenian Church of North America. Thank you, Edwin. No doubt, all of us, we are extremely inspired today with such an important event which takes place here at the Western Diocese, Diana Apgar, is the leading 
leader in the Armenian nation's life, which decades ago has touched the hearts of many, many Armenians, especially orphans, and facilitating their allocation in Japan, has shown not only her good heart, but also equally the immense assistance and help which was given to her, graced upon her by the Japanese people. And that is exactly the reason why we are here today, to celebrate her legacy, her vision, her wisdom, together with the Japanese people. Distinguished guests, tonight's event truly marks a milestone in the life of the Western Diocese. A tribute to honor the legacy of Diana Abgar is historic and most meaningful. A visionary leader who had the foresight to serve her ancestral motherland of Armenia and the church with resilience and professionalism. As the first ambassador of Armenia in Japan, she played a powerful role to facilitate the relocation of close to 1,500 orphans in Japan who fled the first genocide of the 20th century perpetrated by the Ottoman Turks. In a letter dated February 10, 1920, Diana Abkar addressed the Reverend Clergy of the Armenian Church in the United States with the following words. The Armenian Church is unmatched with its lively spirit and soul, consoling and captivating prayers. Nothing comes close to the jubilation one feels during the Divine Liturgy. I do not know whether I would be blessed enough to once again stand before the Holy Altar to hear and embrace the Divine chants and prayers. Honorable Consul General Akira Muto, personally, and on behalf of our community, I would like to extend to you our wholehearted gratitude for the collaboration between the Consulate General of Japan and Western Diocese. You have certainly shown immense respect for a nation which has refused to die. I assure you that Armenians in our ancestral land of Armenia and dispersed in the diaspora will forever be grateful to you in the recognition of the Armenian Genocide. Every step that we take reflects both the pain of our people and the strong commitment to be peace-loving and justice-promoting advocates. History cannot be adjusted to political implications. For them, history is tainted and generations lose the sense of truth and justice. The beautiful country of Japan is known as the land of the rising sun. The horror of the Armenian Genocide filled the heart of the Armenian people with darkness. Our ancestral faith, coupled with the luminous heart of such astounding people as Diana Akkar, ensured that the sun would also rise in our hearts as well. Tonight's event is truly a visit and visible act of the collaboration between the Consulate and the Western Diocese in honor of the legacy of Diana Akkar. This event will further develop the friendship of the Armenian and Japanese people. We are also extremely grateful to have with us, as the main speaker, Dr. Merine Mesrobian, as well as the great-granddaughter of Diana Akkar, Ms. Mimi Malaya. In closing, I would like to thank all those who have taken an active role in the organization of this most educational event, which sheds light upon the mission of accomplished by Diana Akkar and the bond established between the two nations. Thank you. Next, we will have, on behalf of the Japanese community, our co-sponsors, uh, Mr. Darren, Darren Muko, Interim President and CEO of the Japanese American Cultural and Community Center. Good evening. Good evening. Um, on behalf of the Japanese American Cultural and Community Center, the Japanese American National Museum, and the Little Tokyo Service Center. I would like to thank the Consul General of Japan and the Western Diocese of the Armenian Church for this occasion. 
the occasion of bringing different communities together to learn more about and celebrate the legacy of Diana Apkar, the mother of Armenia. Diana Apkar and her legacy is simply fascinating and worthy of her place in history. In Apkar, we see a heroic figure who, when faced with some of the most horrific circumstances imaginable, took decisive action as a means of survival. It's quite difficult to imagine what one might do in the face of what she and the Armenians during World War I experienced. As Japanese Americans, I believe we are drawn to and respect Apkar's legacy because throughout our own collective history of the Japanese in America, the spirit of shared struggle and resistance to injustice runs deep. The Little Tokyo Service Center, the Japanese American National Museum, and the Japanese American Cultural and Community Center were all born from the commitment to preserve Japanese and Japanese American culture and history, and to ensure the vitality of Little Tokyo in Los Angeles. In this context, Dinah Apkar's heroic actions and her legacy serve as a guiding light for our work today. Again, on behalf of uh, Little Tokyo Service Center, the Japanese American National Museum, and the Japanese American Cultural Community Center, we are honored to co-sponsor this event and join you all tonight. Thank you. Next, I would like to invite to the podium, representing the government of Japan, His Excellency, the Honorable Consul General Akira Oboto. It is my pleasure to join you tonight on this special occasion to gather in friendship with the Armenian Japanese communities. I'd like to thank, first of all, our gracious host, His Eminence Archbishop, the Darian, uh, for allowing us to of this beautiful venue. I would also like to acknowledge uh, our member of the uh, National Diet, uh, our Senator, uh, Ms. Rui Matska, who flew all the way from Japan to join us this evening. Let me also acknowledge uh, Los Angeles City Council members, Paul Gregory. Well, this event to foster a stronger friendship between the Armenian and Japanese communities would not have been possible Without the help of our three Japanese uh, American co sponsor organizations, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to the Little Tokyo Saki Center, Japanese American National Museum, and Japanese American Cultural and Community Center. I would particularly like to honor the memory of Executive Director D. Matsubayashi of Little Tokyo Saki Center who unfortunately passed away recently. His life was dedicated to building bridges with diverse communities, and I believe his blessing is with us very strongly this evening. In the lobby, I hope you may have had a chance to see the panel displays, which describe the significant points of friendship between Armenian and Japanese communities. These include descriptions of the Bin Viscount Shibusawa, who established the Japan Near, Year, Japan Near History Relief Fund in the early 20th century, and the Armenian first responders in Spita, who in 2012 installed the Hachkar to remember the victims of the Great East Japan earthquake. There is also the story of the Armenian Americans in Fresno, who aided Japanese American families such as the Doizaki family during their incarceration in camps during World War II, as well as modern day humanitarian Dr. Akira Ishiyama, who has provided over 120 children and adults with cochlear implant surgeries as part of missions of the Armenian International Medical Fund since 2004. Dr. Ishiyama. Representative of the Do Doizaki family and Dr. Ishiyama, both with us this evening. <laughs> now, these are the legacy stories of Diane Amka and Mr. 
Dr. Lesopian and Ms. Malian's guidance. This evening, we will journey back to learn further about his fascinating, this fascinating figure of history, a pioneering woman who bridged Armenia and Japan decades before our current time. I am grateful for this chance to join with all of you today and look forward to a most memorable evening. I would like to extend my gratitude to all gathered here today and hope for the continued growth of friendship between Japan, Armenia, and our respected communities here in Southern California and throughout the world. Thank
second, her efforts to change the Armenian situation through her network, and the third, eventually her relief work in Japan that changed the lives of hundreds of refugees. Let's see who Diana was. Diana Akbar was born, uh, her, her name, let's first talk about her name. Her name was Diana Ababek Apkar in English. In Armenian, there is an Armenian document she signed as Diana A. Abkarians. A basically stands for Ababek. Based on her uh, baptism certificate, in Armenian, it's Gayana. And in uh, English, it says Diana in, in, in that document. <clears throat> so, and also according to my private uh, correspondence with her, uh, Diana's granddaughter, Lucille Apgar, uh, Diana introduced herself, Anahit, when she greeted someone. So she had like different names, but of course everyone knows her as Diana Apgar. She was born in October 17, 1859 in Rangoon, Burma. And when she was still in elementary school, they moved to Kolkata, where she met her husband, future husband, uh, Apgar, Michael Apgar, and eventually married her. And they came to Japan. Uh, oh, sorry, they went to Japan. I'm used to say came to Japan because I live in Japan. <laughs> so they went to Japan in 1889 uh, for a honeymoon, they say, but I think that's also an opportunity. Uh, there was also an opportunity for Apgar just to investigate, you know, the situation about her, about his future business. And they apparently liked Japan very much. And eventually, in 19, uh, 1819, 91, they moved to Japan and settled there. Apgar, uh, Michael Apgar, found uh, uh, founded the, the company AM Apgar and Co. Their business company. Uh, in Yokohama, Kobe, and later uh, there was a branch in Nagoya as well. In 1906, uh, Diana's husband died, and she had she had to take care of three children and the business by herself. Uh, Diana, uh, from 1892 till 1920s, she published nine books and more than 100 articles. In Kolkata, Diana grew up among many philanthropists, Armenian families. It appears that these qualities ran in her family as well. I'm quite sure that growing up in uh, that kind of environment would have had a big influence on her personality. Uh, so uh, um, to, uh, next is about her writing activities. Diana had started her writing career while living in India and continued it in Japan. Her first book, a novel about a young girl called Susan, was written in India and published in Japan. It is believed, and I also think so, to be autobiographical. The second book uh, is Home Stories of the War, is dedicated to Japanese people who suffered during the Russo-Japanese War of 1904-05. Here we can see her admiration of Japanese people, their ability to smile in the face of sorrow. The profits from the book sales were donated to the Japanese, uh, to, to the families who suffered during the war. Here we can already see Diana as a philanthropist. The 1909 Adana massacres radically changed her writing style. Her writing style in both articles and books around, uh, revolved around politics. In the male-dominated society of her time, she was among the minority of women who actively spoke up about politics. She discussed the political events of the world, the maneuvers of the great power, European powers, and did her utmost to draw the world's attention to the Armenian question. The interest in politics might have sprung from her intolerance of injustice. Diana's writings were sometimes, were sometimes compiled and published quickly so that she could get her message to the world as quick as possible. She was known for her passionate writing style. This can be seen in many reviews uh, where reviewers commented on, on the strength and emotion of her writing. 
Her articles were sharp, insightful, and honest. As Bertha Papazian, an American and Armenian author, notices, she would overcome the citadels of cruelty and injustice not by roundabout methods, but by open and immediate attack. The newspapers did not want to publish them as articles because they did not want to take the responsibility for provocative ideas. And we can see that most of our articles are published as letters to editors of, the, of newspapers. The, uh, the next thing is efforts to aid the Armenian situation in Turkey. Besides her mission to publish for the Armenian cause, Diana would personally, personally reach out to different influential figures, asking for some support for Armenians. Her outreach efforts can be summarized in six points. Uh, first, appealing to the permanent court of arbitration in Hague. Second, her efforts to draw the attention of the very prestigious Universal Peace Congresses to the Armenian question. She did this by corresponding with very important peace leaders of the time, including Nobel Peace Prize winners Albert Goba and Bertha von Sutna. Appealing for diplomatic protection to establish a British Armenian Joint Protectorate over Armenia with Swiss governors by contacting British, American, and Swiss politicians and mission missionaries such as James Barton, James Price, and Albert Goba. Trying to create a committee for Armenian self-defense organized by Switzerland and finding ways to distribute arms for Armenians. Sending repeated circulars warning about new massacres known as the Armenian Genocide that were being planned. And finally, the sixth one, planning to create a commission of investigation for the 1913-14 record. However, all, all of her plans were ruined by the outbreak of World War I. During World War I and the Armenian Genocide, from 1915 to 1930s, more than a thousand Armenian refugees fled to Japan through Vladivostok and then to America to, uh, and, or, or Europe. And Diana took them under her wing. The young Armenian uh, government took note of her 11 years of activism and in 1920, Diana was appointed as an honorary consul to Japan. Her appointment was widely reported as news in newspapers, but unfortunately, her appointment was not recognized by the Japanese government, and accordingly, she did not officially become a consul. But she was basically a consul recognized by the Armenian people. So let us see uh, what Diana actually did to help these poor refugees who were knocking at Japan's gates. Here we can see three pictures and a map that I created, let's say, created the rules to show you. Um, the first two uh, uh, upper two pictures, uh, the first one is Satanik and Artaches Mugridichian who came to Japan in 1917, and Karabet uh, Keshkekian in 1919. And the last one is the family of Termagrdichan's family. And the map shows the route of Termagrdichan family that left Van in 1915, went to Yerevan, and then from Yerevan they went to Georgia. From Georgia, they entered Japan, and all the way by the Siberian Railway, they went to Vladivostok, and from Vladivostok, they went to Yokohama. And it took two years. So the route was two years and full of difficult, like they had many difficulties, obviously. It was very difficult. Um, so Japan was as a transit point for Armenian refugees. First, they went to Vladivostok, and they couldn't take any international ships from Vladivostok. They had to go to Japan in order to go to another country, to America or to uh, to Europe or anywhere else. Uh, well, most of most of them were not welcomed at the entering uh, entering port called Tuluba. This was precisely. 
mostly because they were refugees and Japanese government did not have a refugee policy. So they were treated as regular foreigners who were trying to enter Japan without their passports, visas, or money that were important requirements according to Japanese regulations. In addition to this, most of them were born in Ottoman Empire, which was Japan's enemy at that time. Accordingly, they were called Turkish citizens and were not welcomed. Some of them could obtain French and Russian ID documents at French, Russian, French or Russian consulates on the way to Japan. However, most of the refugees were carrying Armenian self-identification documents given by Armenian committees. These were not recognized by the Japanese government. Here we can see the graph based on the, Japan, on the ship manifests uh, of four, 482 Armenians. It shows the passports that they had. And we can see that the, Maru, uh, that the Armenian passports were 65%. Most of them uh, had Armenian passports. And Japanese government didn't recognize that. In order to overcome this legal hardness, Diana started communicating with the Ministry of Interior and the Foreign Ministry. She patiently explained the refugee situation and assured uh, the Japanese government that they did not intend to stay in Japan. She also requested that the government accept the refugees into the country as Armenians born in Armenia. After her request, the decision was made by the government that refugees would be granted special entry permission on the condition that Diana, as a member of the Armenian Committee of America, would take care of their expenses, accommodation, transportation, and all other things the refugees might need. In response to Diana's several requests about accepting the Armenian passports and certificates and issuing Japanese visas, the decision was finally made to issue passage certificates instead of visas to give the Armenian refugees permission to enter the country. A piece of document called Mimoto Hikiukesho, which means guarantee paper, was found where Diana assured the government that she was going to take care of all refugees' needs and that she was responsible for their actions. This is one example of probably many other guarantee uh, papers, thanks to which the refugees could obtain special entry permission. Diana's relief work that changed lives. Diana became a bridge between the refugees and the Japanese government, and then helped them with food, accommodation, arranged their travel documents, provided them with health care and education, and eventually sent them to their final destination. I think that the biggest challenge Diana faced was having sufficient funds to help the refugees. There is an assumption that she did all that from her own pocket. That is not really true. Of course, she used her own money as much as it was possible, but the expenses were so high that it would have been it would it would have been impossible. There were some refugees who were sent some money from their relatives who had already made it to the U.S., but most of the refugees were without a penny. So where where did Diana get the money from? How did she do that? Financial support. Based on her correspondence with the American Red Cross and the Japanese government, it became clear that she had become a member of the represent or the representative of at least three relief societies, such as the Near East Relief, the Armenian Committee at Vladivostok, and Armenian National Committee of America. Accordingly, she had the right to claim financial support for taking care of the refugees. There is a record of the Armenian National Committee of America that shows how much money uh, was sent to Diana from, 19, uh, from 1917 to 1921. And the Japanese government also recognized her as a representative of these committees and
and as a guardian of the Armenian refugees. But the budget was, uh, of these societies was also limited. So she had to find other ways to procure money. She would write to her acquaintances to ask for, the, for their financial support for the refugees' transportation from Vladivostok to Yokohama, as well as an open request newspaper article to ask financial support from the public. She also, uh, she also requested newspaper to spread the article to other newspapers, as it was difficult for her to write that much by herself. The newspaper article received positive responses and, of course, donations. Another problem was the accommodation problem. Of course, she would give shelter to the refugees of her own, at her own house, but, the, but that was not enough. So she had to rent houses and arrange hotel rooms for them. In 19, 1919 was the year when the highest number of the refugees arrived in Japan. There is a Japanese document from uh, that year where Diana's youngest daughter, Ruth, we call Zumruf in Armenian, using her French identification document, was trying to buy the right to purchase property at much cheaper prices from a Dutch nationalities, nationals. At that time, Japan had agreements with certain countries, including Holland and France, that the citizens from those countries living in Japan paid much less for their accommodation than the citizens of her other uh, countries. And that right was called in Japanese, Eitai Shakuchike. I think Ruth was trying to help her mother, another, uh, to help her mother in order to take the two get accommodations for the refugees. Another issue arose when a hotel where she had already reserved, reserved accommodations for the refugees burned down. In that case, Diana had to find other accommodations for the refugees. And she could, uh, she could house only 60 to 70, from 60 to 70 people at a time. If the refugees had health problems, she would take them to the doctor uh, of, for their treatment. She also took care of their children's education during those several months of their stay in Japan. She would send them to school also. There were some Armenians who were uh, repatriated in 1919 through Egyptian port called, uh, port city called Port Said that was under the British control. So those Armenians who were repatriated needed British visas. She would personally contact the consuls and arrange the refugees she would demand that the American Red Cross or the committees make sure that the refugees had either Armenian or French passports to make the visa process easier. From 1919, the American visa process became very strict and difficult. So Diana tried to help the Armenians in Vladivostok to obtain their American visas before coming to Japan. She did this by contacting the Armenian representative in the U.S., Garagin Pastermajan. By the late 1920s, even having a passport wasn't enough. For example, the, uh, at the American consulate, a birth certificate was required from the four refugees. Diana would contact the all Armenian Catholicus and ask him to issue birth certificates for them in order to obtain American. Another problem was the transportation. There were not only Armenian refugees, the refugees from all around the world. The ships were full uh, all the time and it was difficult for Diana to book a, a cabins for the Armenian refugees as most of them were with family members. The ships uh, camp companies sometimes only had space for a, cert for a certain number of men and a certain number of women. Let's review. Uh, Diana. As we can see, Diana worked tirelessly to improve the lives of her fellow countrymen and women and children. She did this through her con continual writing, constantly appealing to her network to help 
and finally her relief work where she overcame numerous obstacles to send the refugees on to safety. On a personal level, I've always had great admiration for Diana's determination. Not only she, uh, was she a woman making her political voice heard in a male-dominated time uh, in history, but she was also a widow, a business owner, and mother of three. Her determination in face of numerous challenges is truly awe-inspiring. Diana ended her life, heroic life in 1937 and is buried in the Yokohama Foreign General Cemetery. Thank you for your attention. We also have a special presentation today. I am delighted to honor the Council General of Japan, Akira Muto. What I have to make a presentation, an Armenian Khachka, but I want to make the description first, dear Council General. Cross stones or Khachkars in Armenian are authentic forms of art. Dating from the 9th century AD. They fuse together two mainstays of the Armenian identity. The Christian heritage carved onto the rocks prevalent in the Armenian highlands. In 2010, UNESCO recognized them as intangible cultural heritage of humanity. We adorn our churches with Khachkars. We erect them as solemn tribute and testimony of faith, goodwill, friendship, and love. On this auspicious occasion, we would like to dedicate this beautiful Khachkar to the long-standing friendship of our two nations, Armenia and Japan, and present it to the Honorable Consul General. And this Khachkar will be mounted on walls of our cathedral. The name of God in both the Armenian and Japanese languages crowns the Khachkar on the top. The arch above the ornate cross symbolizes the connecting bridge between heaven and earth as well as the divine protection of the Almighty. Under the wings of the cross we see the traditional Japanese cherry blossoms. The base of the cross stone depicts Mount Fuji with the rising sun of Japan in the background. Inside of the sun, however, is the Armenian symbol of eternity. Upon closer observation, one can see the replica of Japanese temples or shrines at the base and the top of the columns. The braided columns in which the cross stone is framed symbolize the friendship between our two nations. What a wonderful and historic day for us all to celebrate the cross friendship between Armenia and Japan. And this will be a long standing friendship. Thank you. But thank you, everyone. You know, what a, what a presentation. You know, what a fascinating presentation. I'm really very touched. And I think everybody was. I'm Rui Matsukawa a senator of Japanese national diet. My district is Osaka, which includes the Hirashi Osaka city, a sister city of Glendale, this beautiful Glendale city. And tonight, the Diane uh, Apka, she is the first female diplomat from Armenia. And actually, before, uh, three years ago, I've been uh, a diplomat myself. And by the way, Japanese Empress Masako was a former diplomat. And the most of all, I really want to, I just came back from uh, Lithuania. I visited Kaunas, Tunis Yihara's uh, former country general. And also I visited Finland. That's why I'm wearing this Marimekko dress. But not just it's Marimekko. I chose it for, because it looks like, to me, the Armenian flag. You know, don't you look like that? <laughs> and this big circle represents also Japanese national flag, Sam. What we share is the braveness. What a brave spirit uh, Diana had, or Chiunesu Gihara had. I think 
ジャパンのメアにみやしゃそうまじょ、そうまにいいです。スピリット、フレンシップ。そう、レミトースト、I came here for スミルナイベント last time、and I have to really thank、uh, eminent archbishop、uh, the the d e r i o and then also the rest、uh, uh, dieso, die, of Armenian church。And our country general, Japanese,、uh, they, they work hard too. I mean, all of the, the, the、uh, organization and the charge and charge to actually double the number of the, the people joining tonight. So let us toast for entire n friendship between Japan and Armenia and all the distinguished members, guests. Gathering happiness tonight. Thank you. Toast. Kantai. Thank you so much. Thank you. What do you think? Genatsu. 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 I might be playing out tonight. But I promise I'll come back. Thank you.